Hey yo, what's up y'all? Y'all know who it is. It's your boy Rex Soprano in the building. DOHJ. Yep. Welcome back to the diary. Welcome to Vid 1000. 999 went hard. But the fact of the matter is that who else you know review the game for hard? Who else drops knowledge like that other than me on YouTube? Probably a couple people, but they don't matter because they're not me. Hey, what can I say? I'm a cocky dude. You know, come on, y'all know this by now. It is what it is. But before we get into all that, I want to take a second and explain what you're about to watch. You are about to watch me do a no loss run, a Fatal Fury special on Expert with Ryo Sakazaki. This is possible for one important reason. When the AI of this game was programmed, they kind of forgot to program it for Rio. What happens is the computer knows to fight back, but once Rio does something, the comp the game the, the character freezes in place because they weren't programmed to defend or counterattack. So they just stand there as you will watch. But they but it's like if they think of doing something before you do something, you'll probably get hit, especially on expert. I tried to aim for a perfect run and I got pretty close. This was probably one of my better runs and this is the reason why I use this over all the other ones because it's some wild stuff that happened in this video. So while you listen and pay attention to the randomness that happens as drop inputs equals you eat half your damn energy bar. So before we get into everything else, I do want to shout out my boy Wild Tinker who was the inspiration for making this video. Because he makes a lot of videos like this on this site about fun SNK stuff. And it's like when I when I kind of figured this out because I didn't know this till about maybe a couple months ago that I was randomly playing Fatal Fury Special and didn't realize that when Rio does crap the computer don't do nothing. So I figured it was a fun thing to show off and do that if you want to sit up here and do your own run you can take some notes from this run of what to do not to do. The only thing I suggest is there are only two things you need to do at the beginning of a fight. A high punch call kick or, or a high kick he and she put got it. The only two things you need to do. Do either or. If you do anything else, in the most part, you're either going to get hit or trade. So just so you know that information. With that being said, let's answer the question. Rex, V1000, right? There are a million games you could have reviewed. A million games you could have done, but... Fatal Fury Special? Why? There. You haven't figured it out by now? Well, fine. King of Fighters, the open. You knew it was coming at some point. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out by now. This is what everybody has wanted me to do. Everybody, I get this question like once a week. What do I think about SNK? What do I think about the KOF series? Well, you gonna find out everything I think, everything that I know. I'm gonna have some special guests. I'm gonna have a lot of stuff to cover. I'm gonna have a lot of stuff to get into, man. It's like, this is probably my most ambitious project ever for the page. So, you know, I'm real proud of what I got planned and what I'm doing. Just so you know the layout. The games I will be taking a look at are King of Fighters 94, Rebound, 95, 96, 97, 98, Ultimate Match, 99, Evolution, 2000, 2001. I haven't decided whether I'm going to take a look at the A, the, the MVS and AES version, the Dreamcast version, or the original PS2 version. I don't quite know how I'm going to go about that yet. I might take a look at all three. I might dribble some in and out. I'm not quite sure about that. 2002 unlimited match 2003 11 12 and of course 13 i'm not sure about any of like the portable games and stuff like that i want to take a look at neo blood and howling blood because yeah mo mo and habana yep 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 and then you also got the, the, the two good, you got the whole look, you got Iori's whole squad from uh, Howling Blood, so you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to take a look at those or I might do those as fun little additions after the opens is over. I'm not quite sure about that. One thing I can confirm, no maximum impact. You want to know why? I 
I love Maximum Impact. No, no, no. Let me recorrect myself. No, I love Minion Bear. And I mean love Minion Bear. And I'm not scared to admit it either. But that's not why. No, 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 no. I'm getting me focused. I'm getting me focused. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. The reason I'm not taking a look at Maximum Impact is because, Yo. honestly, Maximum Impact is a great series of games which you should check out on your own time and I really feel that it would be disrespectful to the series to try to lump it in with everything else. So it's gonna get its own opus, its own stage on which to shine on. And Minion Cat Suit! Yeah! Okay, I'm done now. Now, now that we got the aim out the way, Let's get back to the question at hand. The question you may have now is, how does Fatal Fury Special even matter to KOF? Well, let's start with this one. Fatal Fury Special is the first non-canon fighting game SNK ever made. They also say, that it was the inspiration for the King of Fighters game. Yeah, see, now you're starting to catch on. You're starting to catch on. So, also, just on a side note, personally for me, just so I can get this in here, Fatal Fury Special was the first SNK game I ever remember playing back in 94 on Super Nintendo. Yo. I remember playing it vividly. I remember, you know, Terry was my favorite character. I knew a couple of Street Fighter moves. I could do a power wave, you know, stuff like that. I can, I can do a crack shot, all that good stuff. So for me personally, that's another reason why, you know, one day the whole Fatal Fury series is probably going to get his own opus too when it's that time. But right now isn't that time. So, you know, it is what it is with that. Back on subject though. Just let you know that, yeah, this game is the inspiration for King of Fighters. But the reason for the video isn't to explain that. I want to get into something a whole lot more important. How does KOS storyline work? How does it work in conjunction with the storyline that is Fatal Fury? Because I get on message boards a lot and the question is asked a lot. The question is seen to answer by people who claim they know what they're talking about and don't have a damn clue what they're saying. So, I am going to answer that. But, before I answer that, there are a couple of things that you need to understand about SNK and how it works. For all my comic book fans yeah. out there, you guys know how multiverses work, right? For those that don't, here is the multiverse that within a multiverse there is one point an origin point in which everything else diverges from that no matter what it is no matter who it is what they do what they did how they did it at some point it all links back to the origin point within the multiverse the game that represents snk origin point within its own multiverse is neo geo battle Cop. Because it's stated repeatedly that all the SNK characters exist within this one universal world. That from there they go to their own game through their respective storylines and all of that stuff. It's been said, it's been proven. Even even in the case of Nakaru, that it takes place, even though it's Samurai Showdown, she is a god of the universe. She's a god within the universe that Neo Geo Battle Coliseum takes place in. So, with that being said, you now know that everything that happens, whether it's any of the versus games, whether it's fighters, fighters history, because that takes place within the Neo Geo Battle Costume universe, all of the all of the Sunsong games, all of the ADK games, all of those games exist within the universe. Just to explain the the fighters history thing real quick. Makoto Mizuguchi was in King of Fighters Maximum Impact. While that game is its own, why that game is canon because it takes the place 
of Maximum Impact 2 without taking the place of Maximum Impact 2. They, it does state that characters like Xiaolong and, and Mary and Ash take place in it, but Makoto Mimikuchi does too. So, it would be very feasible for any Fighters History character to cross over into anything because with Makoto's inclusion in that game, that game now exists within the multiverse that is SNK. All the Street Fighter characters and all of, all, all of Capcom even exist within this multiverse when they cross over because the the Capcom versus SNK game, at least how perceived they work, is that they take that all of the characters exist within their own little universe within Capcom vs. SNK and they all coexist and all of the things that happen at the same time which like why characters like Geese and Bison can exist you know that Bison got Shadaloo and Geese and King of South Town and all that stuff and it all works because it's an origin point from Neo Geo Battle College. Chaos is a little bit different because for those that don't know Neo Geo Battle Coliseum was originally supposed to be SNK vs. Capcom 2. A lot of you may know the game by its working title, Sammy vs. Capcom, but from what I know, it wasn't gonna have not a Guilty Gear character in it. Even though I would kill to love to see Andy Bogart fight Chip, because that would be some wild shit. Two, nin two real ninjas straight going at it? Yo, that hot. But, with all that being said, there is one other thing you need to know. Write this down because this is important. Samurai Showdown. I repeat, Samurai Showdown. It's not canon to Fatal Fury. Which also means, Ganon and Mai, not related. No, it's like, Ganon and Mai are like Babs and Buster Bunny. Same last name, no relation. They need to bring Tiny Toons back. No, 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 okay, I'm getting this off again. I'm getting this off again. Um, yeah. Same last name, no relation. Just so you know. Samurai Showdown takes place in its own little corner, which affects nothing that happens in Fatal Fury or anything else that is canon to it. Just so you know. Write that down. Go to your nearest message board, type up your boy Rex Soprano just said it because it's proven to be true. With all of that said, you may wonder, a lot of people know basically from KOF how the main storyline of Fatal Fury works. That, from what you may know, it starts at all the fight. You may think that, but that's wrong. There is a, there are, there is one game. There is not, actually, I take that back. There is a series that takes place before Artifact. That game is The Last Blade. Um, yeah. Write that down as a game you need to play too. Last Blade, The Crack. Just so you know. Um, the reason why this is true is because of the characters Zanetsu and Eiji Jitsuragi. It's been proven that Eiji is a descendant of Zanetsu. That is the only link that we have that proves this point. So, just so you know. With that being said, now that you know, here we're, here is where we are so far. Within the canon of Fatal Fury, it goes down like this. Last Blade. Art of Fight. Fatal Fury. I'm going to stop right here because I'm going to drop some mad knowledge on y'all. If you didn't know, there is, there are other games within SNK, SNK, Universe that actually take place within the time between Art of Fighting and Fatal Fury. One of those games is Super Spy because it features Geese Howard. And the depiction of Geese Howard is before Fatal Fury 1. So I have to assume that happens while before his turn, after after he's after he's no longer police commissioner, but when he's the king of South Town at that juncture. That is just based off what I've seen by playing a Super Spy, and that's the assumption I go off of. Another game that you may not even think even takes place or even matter. Three Count Bout. Yep, you want to know why? Mr. Broken himself, Raiden, is a wrestler within 
the SWF, which three count bout represents. His tag partner was the Big Bombardier. He was still Big Bird at that juncture. But then after um, Big Bombardier, I said Big Bombardier, Big Bombardier, I'm sorry, betrays him, he turns into riding, beats his ass. A little after that, he finds Geese and he participates in the first Fate of Fury game. Now you know. So you can add those games in there. I think possibly Burning Fight takes place in there too, but I haven't been able to really prove that. So, you know, you can leave that as a possible maybe, because I'm not sure. So... It is what it is with that. Now, you all know about Fatal Fury and how it works. Here's the thing. Fatal Fury 1 doesn't happen. That game is replaced in canon by Wild Ambition. I want to confirm some things about that right now. Just so we know and understand. Just to answer more questions about people who don't know the answer or don't know what the hell they're talking about. No matter how many characters are in Wild Ambition, only six of them I can think of matter. That being Terry, Andy, and Joe, Geese Money, Duck King, Riding, and I just remembered my boy Billy Khan, baby. Billy Kane. The seven of them matter. The rest of the characters don't really mean nothing. Even though that mod's in it, Kim's in it, Zhang Fei's in it for some reason because at some juncture they SNK found a hard on for a fuck for a fucking lolly Chinese chick. I don't get it because we didn't get you know what? No, I'll say that for King of Fighters 99. Say that for King of Fighters. I will save that rant for King of Fighters 99. I swear to God, I'll save it. I'll save it. Like I was saying, the only two characters I'm not sure uh, not sure about are Toji and Sugumi. I'm not really sure where they fit in with that. I would love to see Sugumi and Toji in another game, but I don't even know if SNK remember they even exist at this juncture, so I don't know either. But they would be cool to have like in a new in like a new Neo Geo Battle Coliseum game or something like that. But yeah. Also with that, just on a side note, to answer the question once and for all, I don't care how many curves Capcom wants to put in Street Fighter 4. Nothing the Street Fighter car Street Fighter 3 characters do matter. If they are inclusion in the game, it's non-canon. The same for the characters that I just named, like Kim and Ma. Them being in the game that's supposed to retail Fatal Fury 1, they weren't around for it. They're just there to make a bigger and diverse roster. That's it. They, Kim and Ma don't participate in a, in a Fatal Fury game of Fatal Fury 2. That is stated canon and fact. That is the end of the conversation. If I ever, ever see somebody else post a random nonsense that, yeah, you know, yeah, um, Ibuki's in the game. She must participate in the third time. No. Stop saying it. Stop spreading mistruths about Capcom canon in which you haven't studied the, You haven't studied it and know nothing about it. We're done. Let us never mention it again until I have to mention it again. Okay, with all that being said, Wild Ambition, Fatal Fury 2, Fatal Fury 3, real bout. The only game after that that may possibly be canon is Dominated Mind and real bout 2. Dominated Mind for the, for White's appearance and, and Alfred before I forget about him. And real about two introducing John Fay and Rick. They exist. Just the things that happen within their game are just non canon And then after all that, you have the game, Mark of the Wolf. But here's the thing. There is one other set of games that take place way after Mark of the Wolf. That being the Fool series. You may know those games better as Savage Rain and Kazuna Encounter. The Link. Of those two games to all of the other canon is a character named Chung Pai Fu, who says in his wind quote that the hat that he wears, he, he got it from the legendary wolf. You know that Terry Bogo. For right now, consider it as it is, because it's questionable because the man's hat's blue, the ter the one Terry wears is red, but we'll just go with the assumption that Chung is telling the truth. And that's that. So here it is. Last 
We begin with Last Blade and any Kazuna encounter and everything I named in between. Let's answer the question. How does this relate to KOF? KOF starts way before Last Blade. It starts with the Kusanagis and the and the Yagami family and the fire and the gay love and all that other crap. Goes for it a whole bunch. The game where the KOF series starts and it takes its turn is Fatal Fury 3 because of Geese Howard and the Gen Scrolls. The difference between, we all know the difference between KOF and Fatal Fury. You seen the beginning of Mark of the Wolves? Fuck your hand! I want this street, bitch! Woo! And die! However, at the end of real bout, at the end of real bout, um, Geese takes that fall, gets the dirt off his shoulder, and continues running stop town like a boss. Like a boss. Do you hear me? Let me say it one time. Geese like a boss. That's all you need to know. And KOF does this thing, and I have 50 million videos to explain what KOF does at that juncture. But just so you know, KOF takes its turn at the end of Fatal Fury 3. Instead of throwing the Gen Scrolls away and not using them like he did in Real Bout 1, he instead uses the Gen Scrolls when he falls with Keith Geese alive, with Mason being KOF 96, for him to make the Outlaw team in 2003, and so on and so on and so on and so on. For the record, just so you know, Maximum Impact follows KOF follows Fatal Fury storyline all the way to the point to before Mark of the Wolf. Kai in that juncture is replaced by Fate and his people until he's shot, which kicks off Maximum Impact. Just so you know. So really quickly, before we end this, let's review. SNK, Multiverse, Origin Point, Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. Samurai Showdown is not canon, will not be canon, is his own canon over here in a corner. The storyline for Fatal Fury is follows. Last Blade, Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, Foom Series. That's that. That's that. KOF takes his turn at Fatal Fury 3 because of Geese, Gen Scrolls, Fall Off Geese Tower, blah, blah, blah. Maximum Impact follows the Fatal Fury storyline to right before Mark of the Wolves and then instead of kind of fate and all that stuff takes place. Congratulations. You have now graduated from SNK Storyline 305. We do not have milk and cookies for you. We do not have a badge of honor. You have learned something here today and now you can take that information and spread it all across and just stop the idiocy with all these people claiming they know what they're talking about and they don't. I have researched this subject for longer than I wish to think about and remember. That's that. I hope you guys have learned something. Welcome to the opus of King of Fire. Before I get out of here, I want to dedicate this to a whole bunch of people. First off, to every SNK fan that had kept the faith through the years. This is for y'all. Because I stand right in that same group with y'all. And I'm very, very proud to say I stand in that same group with y'all. I do. I love SNK like no other. And there are very few people who got as much hype for SNK as I do. And I've met a couple of them. And they're wonderful people. It is what it is. On that same note, if you were SNK fan, dog, and you need a place to call home, Holla my fam over Dream Council. Real talk. For real. I'm serious. They they may have been around for a short time, but it's about to get crazy over there. So go over there, sign up, introduce yourself, let people know where you at, what you're doing. I need to get my ass back over there myself. Cause I can't sit up here and tell you to do it. And I'm not over there as much as I should. But I do do I did my participation now, get my conversation on, and I do that. So shout like I can again, shout out to all my Dreamcaster family, man. I see y'all. So it is what it is. Um, I want to shout out Neo Gaff and the KOF 13 hype thread. There's a couple special people in the thread I do want to shout out. 
I want to shout out my vice president of hype of KOF 13, my boy Fursis. I see you, dog. I appreciate what you're doing, man. Um, you can have Liz, man. I'm just, I'm just gonna roll with the thing. I've been rolling with that for years. You know, we just gonna keep it just good. We gonna keep it just like that. Shout out to my boy Sab C A. Shout out to, uh, shout out to my boy T Zot. And shout out to my boy Hans, man. Hold down the streams every Sunday, dog. I appreciate what you're doing, man. Keep that, keep that awareness up. Keep hype alive, all that good stuff, man. It is what it is. Thank you. With that being said, I'm done. This is this is over. King of Fighters 94. I'll be reviewing it when I get damn real ready. So be damn well ready when I review it. Um. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um. 1,000 in the bag. From here on out, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna get wicked. It's gonna get wicked. I got a whole bunch of stuff planned, dog. Just know the next couple of days, I'm gonna be bombarding your YouTube page with everything that I've been too busy to upload because I've been trying to get this done and get all my other personal stuff taken care of. Again, as usual, keep a watch out for the JR project. I'm gonna be sharing that with y'all very soon within the next couple of weeks. So, you know, be ready for that for me to let y'all know what's really good with the JR project. Um Jack King, Rex Soprano Dog, the, the ultimate team, better than Battle Toads and Double Dragon. We 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 get we got the um we got uh the Streets of Raid trilogy coming, but we didn't thought of some more stuff. So be expecting that within the next couple of months once I finish getting the tech together to do that. Um like I promised you, it's not an hour long, and the time is about done. With that being said, I bow out of here. You know who I am. The motherfucking welterweight, heavyweight, motherfucking champion of the motherfucking world of motherfucking YouTube, motherfucking triple the guy, a.k.a. Rex Soprano, in the building, D-O-A-G-H. Nobody, and I mean nobody, does it like I does it. With that being said, I'm done for real. So, y'all enjoy the rest of this, man. I just recorded the rest of this for y'all so y'all can see all three um all three intros with um with Terry, Andy, and Joe and all the, and all three of the pictures that you show on the high score screen. So, like I said, man, y'all know who I am. It's your boy Rex Soprano, D O A G H. Um Welcome to the Future Diary of a Game Whore. Welcome not to the next level. Don't welcome to the rebirth. We're just going to continue doing it like we always been doing it. And with that being said, I'm out of here for real this time. Again, you know who I am. You know what this is. You know who we be. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace. Oh, there is one more thing. Y'all need to holler at your boy on Facebook, yo. I'm going to be able to keep it real. I got 1,590 subscribers and I only got 80 likes on my Facebook page. I know more than 80 people out of out of 1,590 feeling what I'm doing, man. So go and come through, man. Hit a like button unless you just ain't got a plain Facebook page. But I'm like, real talk. It is what it is, man. We doing stuff major on Facebook, dog. I be dropping a lot of exclusive knowledge because, man, I can't make videos about everything that I know, learn, and think about. So, man, like I said, man, I'm going to have a link down in the description, boy, man. Just get at your boy on Facebook, yo. For real, you won't be good. Now, I'm gone for real. This is your boy Rex Soprano, D-O-A-G-H. Holla at y'all later. Hey.